So I got a couple of questions about my modification to the X32 oscillator trick uh, for fattening up instrument sounds with an added signal generator uh, in which I configure the key to the oscillator's gate to be post fader. So uh, before I show you how I set this up on the X32, let me quickly uh, show you the big picture goal here. So here's the setup that was demonstrated on YouTube uh, by user slow77y. Uh, channel 1 has a kick drum mic as its source and uh, optionally a gate and a high pass filter um, to get rid of some of that unwanted uh, mic sound and low energy, uh, the stuff that's making us go to this oscillator sound to begin with. So we have a sine wave signal being generated by the X32's built-in oscillator, uh, which is then routed to bus 10. Now channel 2, which is essentially our uh, kick fattener channel, is using bus 10 as its source, and uh, channel 2's uh, gate is being triggered by channel 1, uh, the kick drum. So unfortunately, the X32, at least as of software version 2.05, doesn't seem to have any way to select where the gate taps its signal from. So we're signaling the gate from channel 1, but before the fader. Now to work around this, I'm first going to remove channel 1 as the gate's key source, and as an aside, I also like to move it to where it won't be using a low channel number. So I put it on channel 32 instead of channel 2. Next I'll introduce a new bus, bus 9, and send the kick drum to it post fader. And finally I route that bus as the key input to the gate on the oscillator channel. So let's head back now to our X32. In my case, it's the compact model, but the features are the same across the product line. Uh, I have the board already set up roughly as demonstrated in the original video, so make sure you watch his first in order to understand how to get to this step. I have the bass drum mic set up here. It's coming into channel one. And let me turn it up so you can hear it. And I've got a high pass filter here set up on that channel. There's with it off back on again because we don't like the low sound in that bass drum mic. So up here in my oscillator section I've got a uh, 50 Hertz sine wave uh, being routed to bus 10 and as I change my bus layer you can see that bus 10 has the oscillator signal. Now of course channel 2 is uh, set up to be sourced by bus 10 so as I turn it up Hopefully you can hear the thump. Uh, you might need headphones. But uh, during a show, uh, you can mix these two around to your ears content, changing the balance of the original kick and the uh, thump sound. But channels 1 through 8 here are kind of precious real estate, or, or maybe 1 through 16. So I like to typically just mix my kick drum with channel 1 uh, and get the balance between the oscillator and the kick right during sound check. So I'm going to go ahead and show uh, channel 32, which is a pretty out of the way channel. And I'm going to move my oscillator here. And I have a library preset for it, so I'm just going to recall it. And there's my oscillator on 32. And I just need to change its input source to the oscillator bus, which is bus 10. There, there sorry, bus 10. Wasn't looking. Uh, you can see there's the signal. So I'm going to go ahead and blank out channel 2 so it's not in the way using this preset. And now it's gone. So you can hear channel 32 has a thump once again, just like channel 2 did. Okay, so we're doing our show here, playing around with our uh, DCAs. Uh, maybe we're moving some faders around, whatever we're doing. And we want to take our kick drum down in the mix. So we lower the fader, maybe even want to mute it. And the thump's still there. Uh, here it is on channel 32. Let me turn it up. And of course, that's because our kick's input is still there. And the gate key on the oscillator channel is pre-fader. Alright, let me go ahead and turn that down for a second. Alright, now the next thing I said we'd have to do is configure another bus, uh, bus 9 in this case, uh, to use for the post-fader kick drum. So bus 9, and let me actually make this visible in the scribble strips. Uh, there we go, yellow is pretty readable. 
So the next thing we actually need to do is make sure this is set up as a post fader bus. Um, so here in the bus configuration screen, I'll go ahead and use a subgroup for this bus. Okay, now odd and even pairs, of course, are configured together. So as I switch between nine and 10, you'll see they're both showing as subgroups, which is okay because the oscillator is being used for bus 10. And of course, there's no fader to affect it. So next, I actually need to send my bass drum to this bus. Um, see, it's already selected. Uh, let's first uh, bring it up to Unity and use Sends on Fader. Of course, since it's a subgroup, I just need to unmute it since the fader levels don't actually matter. Now let's go ahead and exit Sends on Fader, unmute our channel, and oops, uh, my DAW just stopped playing the kick drum back. One second. There it goes again. Uh, so now you can see here in bus nine, our subgroup that we've got the kick drum signal coming in post fader. Okay, so let's hop back to our oscillator channel now, which is channel 32, and let's go to our gate section. Now we have to make one change, as we said before, um, and that's to go into our key source here on the second layer and change that from channel one, which was from our previous setup, to now be our post-fade kick drum channel, which of course is um, bus nine? Yeah, bus nine. Okay, uh, let me actually go ahead and lower the gates threshold a little bit here on the oscillator channel, channel 32. And now as I adjust uh, the fader on my kick drum channel, um, watch the gate input here on the screen. So as I move the fader of the kick drum down, you'll see that it's uh, peaking farther away from the gate. And as I pull it back up, it's peaking closer and then exceeding the gate, uh, which is not especially helpful for what we're trying to do. So up here, um, using the second encoder, we can give the function of the gate's threshold a little bit of a slope. Um, and at this point, just tweak things until it sounds the way you like. So now as I adjust the attenuation of the kick drum channel, the gate reacts accordingly, giving me gradually more or less sine wave. So I can adjust the kick drum here um, with one fader. And um, you know, while I had to use another bus for it, that second oscillator channel is now out of the way and I can mix with just one fader. Um, maybe some of you out in the X32 community can suggest a better way about doing this.